What is going on YouTube? Man, I know it's been a while that I haven't posted anything, but today finally I decided to record this video. And what I've been noticing is that a lot of students sometimes have trouble with knowing how to uh, interpret the maintenance logs and you know also showing it to the examiners. So that's why I decided to create this video so I can show you how I go through the logbooks and how I teach my students to um, go through all the maintenance inspections and all that. Thanks for all the subscribers um, that I got lately. I mean, it's been, it's been crazy. I've been getting like, uh, uh, I think like 50 subscribers a day or something at, at the peak. So I really appreciate all of you that have subscribed. Um, I would try to do better on posting a little bit more regularly. I know I've been slacking a little bit, but you know, it's been, um, I've been pretty busy. So <laughs> here we go. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. All right. So most likely you guys are already familiar with the acronym AVH. So these are all the inspections that the aircraft needs to be up to date to make the flight legal. So up here we have AVs, obviously mandatory inspections or whatever the AD says that uh, they need to do. We have a VOR check, which needs to be performed every 30 days. Oops. And that is only for IFR. We have inspections. Okay, and that is an annual, has to be performed every 12 calendar months, and a 100 hour inspection, and that is if the aircraft is being used for compensation or hire. We also have an altimeter check, and that's, that's every 24 months, okay. And again, it's only for IFR, not for VFR. Transponder, again, also 24 calendar months. ELT, that's every 12 months. And there's also other aspects in that, you know, if you use more than 50% of the battery or the uh, ELT has been used for uh, more than one hour, it also you have to replace the battery because there's two aspects to the ELT inspection. So you have the inspection itself, but you also have the battery replacement. By the way, uh, quick uh, fun fact, the only batteries you can use in an ELT are Duracell. You cannot use Energizer, and that is because Duracell is approved by the FAA. And finally, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see that. We have the static system. Okay, and that is the pitot static system, pretty much. So we have the pitot tube and the static system, and that is every 24 months. Okay, so just so you know, the pedostatic check, the transponder, and the altimeter, okay, are done at the same time, okay? They, it depends what equipment they're using, but I know there's this, uh, I think it's called an IFR 6000. It's a machine that pretty much can do all of it, or maybe they have a different system. And usually in the logbook, you're gonna have one, uh, one entry, okay, that tells you that they've done the altimeter check, the transponder and the static system. I had some people pretty much try to find uh, each of them individually when they're all in the same uh, entry, logbook entry. All right, so now let's go ahead and locate all of these inspections in the logbooks. Hey, what's up? All right, so here's, again, I don't know if this is a good angle. Hey, again, I'm not a videographer, so uh, just uh, bear with me, I'm pretty sure after I do a lot of these, I can get a little bit better, but I thought this was a pretty good angle here. So we can go, actually, let me change that a little bit. That's gonna work. All right. Oh, please leave a, a comment below if you think this is not a good angle. That way 
um, I can work on it in the future. But uh, here's the logbooks for a Cessna 172 uh, November, and we're gonna go through them, okay? All right. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, here's the log books. Okay, I like this. I like it when they have it in a nice binder. Okay. All right, so just so you know, there's three different log books. You have uh, the airframe log book, you have the engine log book, and you also have the propeller log book. Okay, so um, first one here is the engine log book and uh, we're gonna go through those. All right, so first here, um, I'm actually gonna change this. I'm gonna put it a little bit closer. All right, so I think this is better, uh, but pretty much we have a, a little bit of information on the engine. So this is a Lycoming 0320 uh, H2AD. Okay, that's the, the model. And just remember that because uh, that's gonna come into play a little bit further when we start going through through the logs, okay? So as you see over here, date uh, April 7th, 2020, okay? That's when the 100 hour inspection was performed. Now, the difference between a 100 hour inspection and a annual inspection, I mean, the inspection is the same thing. The difference is who signs it, okay? So a 100 hour inspection, an AMP can sign that. That's uh, in, in an annual inspection, you need to have an IA or an inspection authorization. Oh, before I go any further, also remember that an annual can be also done in place of an, a 100 hour inspection, but a 100 hour inspection cannot substitute an annual. All right, so let's go through this entry. Let's see, maybe I'm gonna put it a little bit closer over here. So obviously up here we have the date, okay, and then we have T-S-M-O-H. What that means is time since major overhaul. Okay, so what this is saying, actually, yeah, right here. What this is saying is that this engine was overhauled 709 hours ago, okay? Um, now, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put a service bulletin for Lycoming probably somewhere in, in the screen here and why this is so important, well, Lycoming recommends that you overhaul a Lycoming 0320 every 2,000 hours. Some examiners may ask you, hey, so how long before you had to overhaul this engine? So that's when you're gonna have to show them. Well, the uh, time since major overhaul is 709 hours. Well, let me subtract that from 2,000 and that will give you how many hours left before the engine's gotta go to an overhaul. Now, a lot of examiners won't even take a check ride um, if it's past uh, TBO or time between overhaul. Then the rest of the stuff is pretty straightforward. You have the registration, the tachometer, uh, the engine serial number, and then also the time since new, TSN. That means that this engine has 3,859.9 hours since it was new, okay? So we have, uh, once an engine runs out of time, there's pretty much three options. You can do three things. Either you can overhaul it, you can rebuild it, or you can buy a new one. Obviously, if you buy a new one, this time will be zero, correct? Um, if you rebuild it, you can actually zero this time because the inspections are more uh, strict. And then when you do an overhaul, you maintain the time since new, but obviously you zero the time since overhaul, okay? I hope that makes sense. Then the rest of the logbook goes through, you know, different ADs that they complied with, um, the compressions, actually compressions look pretty good. And at the end of the day, it says that I certify that this engine has been inspected in accordance with the 100 hour inspection and was determined to be in airworthy conditions. So this will take care of the 100 hour inspection. If you're renting in the airplane, it needs one because it is for compensation or higher. Now let's go ahead and find the annual 
inspection, okay? So the annual is right here. Um, again, it goes through all the, you know, all the ADs that they complied with, the compressions, all that good stuff, and at the end is signed as an annual inspection. And just remember, annual, 100, same inspection. The only difference is that the annual needs to be signed by an IA, okay? So that's pretty much it for the engine side of things. And always remember, okay, so you have an annual in a 100 hour inspection for the engine, for the airframe, and the propeller. So we have to find those two in all three logbooks, okay? So let's go ahead and proceed. Here's the airframe log, okay? And I always ask my students, you know, we took care of the 100 hour inspection, the annual, but what about the altimeter and the transponder and the static system? So I always ask them, you know, what, what logbook and what logbook would you, uh, you know, look for those inspections? You know, because is, is the, the transponder in the engine? Is, is the transponder in the propeller? Well, obviously the answer is no. So the only place you could find those inspections is in the airframe log. Okay, so let's dive into that. Also, I always like going, uh, I don't start it from the beginning, I just go to the end and work my way forward because that's how you're gonna be able to see the most current entries, okay? All right, so here is the 100 hour inspection for the airframe. And it pretty much just goes through um, all the different things that they did, um, you know, corrosion X, uh, different ADs that they complied with. Okay, so that takes care of the 100 inspection, nothing special on it. Now let's go ahead and hunt for the uh, annual. Oh, here it is. Okay, well, it's not stick to it, but well, I guess that's better because I can zoom it up a little bit. So this is the 100 hour inspection um, entry. And as you see, it is signed right here as, a, as an annual inspection. And here is the battery, uh, the ELT battery replacement date. It also says that they perform the ELT check. So we already taken care of the 100 annual inspection from the, for the engine as well as for the airframe. And we also found where the ELT check was. And that is usually uh, in the annual entry on the airframe logbook. Perfect. Now, let's go ahead and look for the IFR certification, that's what it's called, which covers the pedostatic system, the altimeter, and the transponder. And like I told you before, that is all gonna be in one entry. That is this entry, it's usually a little bit smaller, okay? Um, and what it pretty much says is, I certify that the altimeter and the static system test required by 14 CFR 91, 411 and transponder test, including data corresponding required by 91, 413 have been performed and uh, found to comply with blah, 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 blah. So you pretty much get the point, all right? So there's only one entry, okay, that covers the altimeter, transponder, and pedostatic check. Also remember, it's gotta be performed every 24 calendar months. And when it comes to the BWAR, most flight schools have a log where you can go and see when the uh, checks were performed. Also, uh, something that I didn't mention in the uh, in ABH is the uh, every 28 days you also have to check that your GPS database was uh, updated. That's also part of making sure that the airplane is legal to fly in this case in IFR conditions. All right, so with that, we conclude pretty much uh, everything that we can find in the airframe log and we'll proceed to check the propeller log. And that is right here. Usually it's always uh, a little bit smaller because there isn't that many stuff going on with this one and I like going to all the way to the end. So as you see, here's the propeller uh, tag for the 100 hour inspection, okay? 
And here is the tag for the 100 hour inspection. I remember when I was training, um, I was pretty much taught what, whatever I'm showing you right now, but like when you look inside the logbook, I mean, you're gonna notice that there's you know more more documents, more paperwork, and uh, in the beginning, I did feel a little bit, let's say, uncomfortable. Like I just didn't know what all those documents were. So I just want to go over what else you can find, you know, in a, in a bag here full of records. Okay, let's do that. For example. Here's a book that says 337s and SDCs. So 337s are records of any major uh, major alterations or repairs, and the SDC stands for Supplemental Type Certificates. So pretty much if there's a modification that you want to do to the aircraft, it needs to be approved by the FAA, and this is the document that approves that, the SDC. Okay, so if you see something like this, it is simply uh, documents that show any any repairs, uh, major repairs uh, that were performed to the aircraft. Okay, so here's for example, you know, Form 337's alterations, and back here we have all the supplemental type certificates. They they look just just like that. Okay. Also, a lot of times uh, you're gonna find a lot of 8130s inside of the records. These are just pretty much, um, you can't just put whatever you want in an airplane, okay? It's gotta have a um, 8130, especially when they're overhauled. Um, you need to keep record of, of, the, of this, uh, which is the uh, authorized release certificate. So if you see these, that's, that's what it is, it's a part okay that was installed in the airplane and they're keeping um, record of it this one is a new one so you could actually get rid of it but it's always good to keep track of them so pretty much this concludes uh, going over the log books again there isn't much more in this uh, particular airplanes um, bag but if you ever come across something that you don't know uh, what exactly it is, please feel free to uh, drop a comment below or maybe you can, uh, I'll provide my email so maybe you can co contact me through there. And also, I am offering um, online classes. So if you ever wanna you know, talk about any topic related to flight training, I will provide a link below where you can schedule a ground session with me. Hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.